Hi everyone, welcome to this session of the Tiger Academy, Investment Strategies for the U.S. Stock Market. In the first seven lessons, we learned the two parts of investment basics and trading fundamentals in U.S. stock investment. In this lesson, I'll take you through the study of advanced investment strategies. Investment strategies are important. We all know what a treasure hunt is, so let's use the analogy of treasure hunters and looking for treasure to better understand. Treasure hunters often dig for gold using their skills and a treasure map. It can be said that the quality of treasure map directly determines the success or failure of a treasure hunt. In US stock investment, there's something similar to a treasure map. It's called investment strategy. Having an investment strategy will not only alert you to where a crisis may occur in the market, but also to what the long-term trend of the market is and what kind of listed companies you should be trading. There are countless stock investment strategies in play in the trading market. Here, I'm going to introduce you to a classic top-down strategy that's divided into three steps. Step one, assess the macro environment. Step two, choose an industry and identify quality companies within that industry. Step three, use technical indicators to determine the best entry and exit prices. Let's talk about step one, assessing the macro environment. Very simply, this step is to help you determine if it's safe to dive into the water. The macro environment can be divided into two parts, the policy side and the capital side. Let's talk about the policy side first. The experience of many investment gurus throughout history tell us that trend is your friend and that trend can be very much connected to policy. It's like going into a forest to dig for gold, only by finding the most likely area in which gold might be found and by avoiding possible crises along the way you can find the opportunity and finally dig for it. Being aware of changes in policy will help you identify areas where high quality stocks are most likely to appear, which will greatly increase the success rate of your stock investing. What is the policy side? Simply put, stock market fluctuations caused by changes in government policy are called policy side and can generally be divided into three categories. Number one, event risk. Number two, fiscal policy. Number three, Monetary policy. Event risk are sudden changes, for example, a change in government policy, which can either support or restrict a certain industry for a certain purpose. The announcement of such policies can either give the stocks of the companies within the industry a boost or sink them. For example, in October 2021, White House Press Secretary Kevin Munoz announced on Twitter that the United States would cancel its restrictions on inbound travel for foreign tourists from 33 countries and regions and that it would reopen its borders to tourism. International aviation and travel-related industries, which had been hit hard by the pandemic, reacted sharply to the news with a surge in ticket bookings from Europe to the United States and a rise in airline, hotel and cruise stocks in the United States, with American Airlines stock rising 2.8%. Event risk may not always be good news. For example, in the last few months of 2020, the US Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission launched antitrust lawsuits against Google and Facebook. In March 2021, both the Senate and the House of Representatives held antitrust hearings to prepare a number of targeted drafts. During that period, the stock prices of Google and Facebook took a hit. So as an investor, we need to be mindful of what potentially might be an event risk that could affect or change the fundamental principle of a company or a sector. Now let's talk about fiscal policy. The primary instigator of fiscal policy is government. When the economy is not doing well, the government will encourage investment in infrastructure and increase spending, sometimes to a point of a deficit budget to try and stimulate economic development. For example, in 2021, in order to better enable the US economy to recover from the negative impact of the pandemic, the Biden administration launched a multi-trillion dollar infrastructure plan focusing on electronic vehicles, infrastructure, and affordable housing, among other things. The stock market reacted positively to the policy announcement, and the S&P 500 index reached a new high. In addition to event risk and fiscal policy, the market also pays great attention to announcement on monetary policy. The leader of monetary policy in the US is the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the United States. Its main job is to make the policy decisions based on how well the national economy is doing. If there's too much cash in circulation, they'll tighten up the supply, and if there's not enough, they'll relax monetary policy to increase the money supply. Interest rate hikes and cuts are the most important ways in which the Fed implements monetary policy. Simply put, 
If the Federal Reserve wants to increase the money supply, it will lower interest rates to buy US Treasury bonds, thus injecting dollars into the market. With more dollars in the market, interest rates will fall. On the contrary, if the Federal Reserve wants to raise interest rates, it will sell a large number of Treasury bonds to the market and soak up dollars. When liquidity is reduced, market interest rates rise. It's just that simple. From the monetary policy view, the Fed's interest rate hikes are used to remove liquidity from the markets and to make the dollar scarce and thus more valuable. If the dollar rise in value, its purchasing power will rise and the dollar index will begin to strengthen and rise along with it. Here some investors may have doubts. Why should we raise interest rates? Isn't it better to have more money sloshing around in the market? This is the second question we're going to discuss. First of all, we can collectively refer to the money that's in circulation as the capital side. Generally speaking, the looser the monetary policy, the more abundant the capital side is in the markets and the better off the stock market is. The tighter monetary policy is, the tighter the capital side is, and the worse it is for the stock market. You can imagine that when monetary policy is loose, interest rates in the market will be lower. When that happens, government bonds and bank saving rates become less attractive and more people prefer to invest their money in stock market to get the relatively high returns, which will directly benefit the stock market. In addition to targeting the stock market, monetary easing can reduce the cost of corporate borrowing and promote employment. Interest rate reductions reduce not only the rate paid on savings accounts, but also the rate that companies pay to borrow from banks. So, they are more likely to borrow money to grow their businesses, which helps grow the economy and jobs. From this perspective, isn't monetary easing a good thing? In fact, excessively loose monetary policy is not a good thing. The first goal of monetary easing is to lower interest rates, but low interest rates are harmful to retirees and others who rely on fixed income investments. If interest rates are too low, some investors who usually have a low risk tolerance will be forced to take on additional risk in order to generate income. A second point is that loose monetary policy may also overheat an economy. With the government central bank frantically printing more money, the money supply begins to grow faster than the output of goods. This phenomenon inevitably leads to inflation. That is, your money is worth less and you need to spend more of it to live. For example, the loose monetary environment created during the pandemic led to a direct impact on our lives. In response to the downturn brought about by the extended shutdown of its economy, the US put in place a large number of monetary easing policies that dramatically increased the money supply. Combined with interruptions to the supply chain and the impact of the Ukrainian-Russian conflict on energy supply, that led to an explosion in inflation in the US. In response, the US Federal Reserve has recently implemented a series of steep interest rate hikes to try to reduce the money supply. The March inflation report released by the US Department of Labor in April shows the consumer price index rising 8.5% year over year, the largest such increase since December 1981. Among those consumer prices, food rose by 1%, housing rose by 0.5%, and energy prices rose by 11%. Excessive monetary easing leads to serious inflation, which not only raises your overall cost of daily needs such as food, clothing, and fuel, but also devalues your currency. It also requires that you bear greater investment risk in exchange for getting greater returns in order to cover the rising costs. Now, do you still think that the more money in the market, the better? That brings us to the end of the first part of the US stock investment strategy, assessing the macro environment. After gaining the preceding knowledge points, you can't help but ask one question. Why is assessing the macro environment important for assessing the safety of the stock market as a place to invest? The reason is very simple. If a black swan event occurs, such as an unexpected interest rate hike or a natural disaster, or an industry having its activities suddenly and severely restricted by government policy, would you still commit great sums of money to investment in a company within that industry or to invest in any company for that matter? I believe you already know the answer to that question. Just remember Warren Buffett's two rules for investing in stocks. So if you've been lucky enough to get your hands on an investment treasure map, the first thing you need to do is avoid possible danger areas and increase your chances for survival. Only then will you have a greater chance to dig for that gold. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. Let's summarize the key content that we've covered. Stock investment strategy, the policy side, the capital side, 
How's it going? Isn't treasure hunting interesting? Through the first part, you learned how to assess the macro environment and to determine what kind of environment is suitable for entry trading and what type of environment should be avoided. At the same time, by determining what the government policies are for a particular industry, you'll be able to target sectors containing high quality companies, greatly increasing your chances of success in stock investment. In the next lesson, I'll teach you how to choose industries with the greatest future potential. If you choose the right industry, you'll have a higher chance to step right into the fast lane of rising stocks and be one step closer to success. I'll catch you next time.